Good evening, Lighthouse. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, you can see we're uh, in a little different location tonight. I uh, wanted to come over to our youth sanctuary next Wednesday night. Our youth will be uh, kicking their services back off, and we're so excited about that. And many of you probably haven't been in here since we remodeled the youth sanctuary, and uh, they got a beautiful place to gather. And so we're excited about them being able to get together uh, next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Remember, we'll be doing our uh, adult Bible study live stream. We won't have children's services that night. It'll just be for the youth, but uh, be in prayer for that. And Pastor William is excited about getting the youth back together, and we are too. Uh, also remember this coming Sunday on the 9th, uh, we'll be uh, starting our first children's service back uh, on Sunday morning, along with nursery. We may have one or two spots left. If you're interested in that, you need to check before tomorrow evening uh, about getting your children involved in the children's ministry, because I think we're just about full for what we can handle on Sunday morning right now, but we're excited about all of those ministries and uh, we thank God for allowing us uh, the opportunity to get back together with our, our children and our youth in services, and they're going to have a great time. Uh, tonight is going to be a little bit different. Uh, last Thursday evening, we had the opportunity to uh, go over to First African Baptist and worship with Pastor Edwin Beckles. Uh, they were having their Park and Praise Revival, and it was just an awesome evening service. Uh, we did it outside, and uh, it was just a, a beautiful time together, and we're going to show you that service tonight. We wanted to uh, let you, uh, we had a, a good many that came out from Lighthouse to be a part of that service, but I know some of you weren't able to. I want to show you that service, a very important word, a very timely word. I think it'll be a blessing to you tonight. Uh, and so uh, we uh, thank you for tuning in. Let's receive our offering tonight, and then we're going to get right into the service over at First AB uh, this, this evening. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for the opportunity to uh, give today, Lord, in this uh, service, Lord. We thank you for all of your goodness and your blessings to us, Lord. And we just ask you tonight, God, to bless your people as they give. Father, I pray now that you would open up every heart to receive your word, God. We thank you for the opportunity to worship together with uh, other churches in this community, God. It's been a, uh, it's been your heartbeat for this church, Lord, for uh, uh, as long as we've been here, God. And we just thank you for this opportunity uh, that we had to serve last week, God. And just uh, thank you again for all that you do for this church in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy the service. All right, I want everybody to praise the Lord, everybody. All right, you, you, got, you, 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 you got to let me know you're out of there. Come on. I need you to honk your horns. I need you to clap your hands. Come on, we get ready to begin. Come on, everybody. If you're in your vehicles, you got to honk your horns. If you're outside the vehicle, I need you to clap your hands, everybody. Let's begin our park and praise revival. How many know this is the day the Lord has made? We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on. If you're happy and you know it, blow your horns. Come on. If you're saved and you know it, blow your horns. Come on. If you love Jesus, I want you to blow your horns. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to God. We get ready to pray. We get ready to pray. Come on, everybody, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity, God, that we can come under open heaven and lift up the name of Jesus. Because we know when praises grow up, the blessings of God will come down. Thank you for this night of revival as we, as we sing your praises in the open atmosphere. We pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit will reign supreme right here in this atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that the word of God will rain down like fire. Let your fire fall on this man of God tonight. Let your word go forth with power and authority. In the matchless name of Jesus, our Christ. And Father, we dare to give you praise, even in the midst of a pandemic, because you are worthy to be praised. If you believe that, won't everybody give God a shout? Come on, somebody. Let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. Come on. Praise God. 
If you have your Bibles, I know our time is short tonight. I know it's going to get dark here in just a little bit, and uh, I've prepared a message. I can crash land this at any time if need be. So uh, a word, I think, very timely for all of us tonight. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn over to the book of Philippians, the first chapter. Philippians chapter number 1, just three verses that I'd like to read. Philippians 1, starting tonight with verse number 12. It says, And I want you to know... My dear brothers and sisters, that everything, say everything. Say it again, everything. How much is everything? Everything. That everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And because, because... And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. Now when Paul wrote this little letter to the church at Philippi, he was writing it from a Roman prison. He was there in chains, guarded, he said, by the palace guard. If you know anything about the palace guard, they were, uh, they were the emperor's guard, they were the uh, seals of our day. They were the army rangers. They were the best of the best. And uh, Caesar had put them in charge to watch over and keep the apostle Paul as he was under arrest in the emperor's palace. Now, though Paul appeared to be the one in chains, though I want you to hear something tonight. I want you to see something in this text. Paul wasn't really the one that was in chains. <laughs> he was in chains because they were chaining him up to the palace guard. And can I tell you, how many of you know who was really in chains? Can I tell you, there were some that were chained to him 12 hours a day for the shift. And uh, the apostle Paul would tell them about Jesus. He would preach to them and he would anoint them and he would share with them the marvelous grace and goodness of our Lord and Savior. And so as he closes this letter, he finally writes, and all the other Christians send their greetings to, especially those who work in Caesar's palace. In other words, there were people being saved in Caesar's palace. They thought they were putting Paul in prison and they thought that they would stop Paul by putting him in chains. But what they did not understand was that it was Paul was reaching the guards and reaching the palace and they were going outside of the palace. They were going back into their homes. They were going back into their community. They were going back to their family and they were sharing the good news of Jesus with all of those around them. Paul is saying in this text, and this is the point I want you to hear tonight, he says, I have used this problem. I have used this adverse situation. I've used this uncomfortable place that I find myself in tonight for the sake of the gospel. You see, Paul just didn't sit there in prison and lament. Paul just didn't sit there in that jail cell and, and, and be angry and be anxious about the situation that he found himself in. He said, I'm going to take these handcuffs that they have put me in. Are you listening to me? He said, I'm going to take these handcuffs that they've chained me up in and I'm going to take them off and I'm going to beat the devil with the same thing that he put me in chains with. I'm going to take what he's meant for my destruction and I'm going to turn it around for the glory and the good of God. They think they're stopping me. They think they're keeping me from preaching the gospel. But I'm here to tell you, nothing can stop me because everything, say everything, everything. I'm going to use everything. I'm going to use everything for the glory of God. You see, Paul wasn't a victim. He was a victor. And he had determined to use what the devil meant for his harm for God's glory. And the reason I want to preach this message tonight is we find ourselves today in seemingly very similar circumstances. We are surrounded today by situations that seem to be hopeless and helpless and outside of our control. It seems like I don't know where you believe all of this stuff came from. 
come and I'm not here to argue if it's God or the devil but one thing I do know pastor is the devil is using everything that's going on to do all that he can do to kill and to steal and to destroy and I've just come to tell you tonight that I'm not going to sit back and let the devil beat my brains out I've just made up my mind that I'm going to take the stick that the devil beats me with and I'm going to take it from him and I'm going to beat his brains out with it hallelujah 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 I'm not telling you this I'm not telling you this tonight uh, because that, uh, that we ought to be in a hole somewhere worried about COVID-19. Now, I know COVID-19 is real. And I know people are really dying from it. And I know you ought to take precautions. But can I tell you, whenever fear rises up in your heart and you hole up out of fear, can I tell you, that came right out of the, stri- the pits of hell because God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and of peace and of a sound mind. And if fear is rised up within you, you got to take that stick, amen, and beat the devil with it, amen. Some of you have lost your jobs and some of you don't know where maybe even the next paycheck is coming from and you've gotten down into worry and you've gotten down into distress. But can I tell you, the devil is a liar. My God shall still supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Take the stick out of the devil's hands and beat his brains out with it. I'm going to use everything, everything, everything. Don't do this, don't do this. What I'm about to tell you, don't do this because they'll lock you up for it now. But, but when I was a little boy growing up, if, if, if one of the kids bit another kid, when you got home, what happened to you? You got bit, amen. Mama and daddy would bite you. And they wouldn't, just, they wouldn't just mock bite you. They'd leave teeth mark in your arm, amen, because they wanted you to feel what that, what that other child felt when you bit them. And I'm not telling you to bite your child, but what I am telling you tonight is you need to take a bite out of the devil. If the devil is nipping at your heels, if the devil is biting you, you need to turn around and bite him back. It's time, listen, it's time, church. We can't sit around and let the devil kill, steal, and destroy us. It's time that we don't act like David's brother, but we act like David. And if nobody else will go and fight that devil, I'll fight him. Amen. Somebody's got to make up their mind that the devil is still a liar. And the one thing that stings the devil most, listen, the one thing that stings the devil most is when you take what he meant for your destruction and you turn it around and use it to bless somebody else with hallelujah you want to make listen when a snake bites you they'll take the same venom venom that the snake meant to kill you with and they'll make an anti-venom out of it so that the same venom that was meant to kill you will heal somebody else hallelujah and I'm just telling you tonight it's time. Listen, church, we got we to gotta stand up to the devil because if you don't, he's going to beat your brains out. And he's not going to give up. He's not a quitter. He's not going to slow down. You got to fight back. Look at your neighbor and say, you better fight. <laughs> Here then is one of the great principles. It's the, it's the only principle. I got a one-point message tonight, which is unusual for me. Amen. A very simple principle that I want you to learn. If the devil bites you, bite him back. If the devil hits you, hit him back. If he beats you with a stick, take it out of his hand and hit him in the head with it. If he gives you a lemon, squeeze it in a glass and get you some Holy Ghost sugar and make some lemonade out of it. Take what he has meant for your your harm and turn it around for something that's good. Now he's not saying, now, now Paul's not saying that everything that happened to him uh, was for the gospel's sake. That there are things that happen in your life. God does a lot of good things in your life, but sometimes uh, you're a victim of circumstances. Sometimes you're under attack of the enemy. Can I get a witness? The devil does fight people. Not everything, not everything comes from God, but Paul said, I've come to the conclusion in my life, I don't care, care if it comes from God. I don't care if it came from the world. I don't care if it came from Satan. I'm just going to take everything, say everything. I'm going to take the good stuff and I'm going to take the bad stuff. I'm going to take what feels good and I'm going to take what doesn't feel so good. I'm going to take what costs me pain and I'm going to take what what makes me rejoice and whatever comes my way, I'm going to use everything. Say everything. Everything for the glory of God. Everything. 
Now I've learned over the years the importance of this one simple truth. It has been at the heart of my ministry ever since I began preaching. I came to the conclusion a long time ago, if you've heard me preach, you've probably never heard me preach without talking about myself. I'm going to tell you about my experiences. Why? Because I've discovered that my experiences, it doesn't matter if I liked it or if I didn't like it, if it felt good or if it didn't. I've come to the conclusion that whatever has happened in my life, that I can take it and use it for the glory of the gospel. I can take it for the preaching of the word of God. I can use it to forward God's blessed word. You see, we're all a product of a life experience. And some had better start than others. And some, some uh, grew up in a bad environment. And some grew up in a wonderful environment. But I've come to tell you tonight that whatever hand you've been dealt, you can use it for the glory of God. I don't care how wretched your situation was. I don't care what hell you came out of. God says, if you'll allow me to, I'll use it for my glory. Amen. For instance, let me give you a story. For instance, I had an alcoholic father. My daddy was a drunkard. We call them alcoholics today. The Bible calls them drunkards. My, my daddy loved drink. And it ended up killing my daddy. And it ended up taking my daddy's life at far too early of an age. My daddy died when he was 47 years old. He died in my presence. I was the first one to reach him when he dropped dead in the floor dead. It was a very traumatic experience in my life. One that I wouldn't wish upon anybody. But as I grew and became a Christian and began to preach God's word, I began to understand that there's power in my testimony. I didn't want that to happen. I didn't expect that to happen. I didn't like it when it happened, but it happened. And so I decided that I'm just going to take my story and I'm just going to turn it around and I'm just going to use it for the glory of God. I'm going to share what my experience was because the good news is, is I'm not a drunkard. The good news is, is I'm not left my family the good news is I'm saved healed and filled with the Holy Ghost of God hallelujah huh. I've discovered that my life is a powerful testimony to the goodness of God's grace I've used my story for instance a thousand times because I've told single moms that, that have little children running around them and daddy's died or daddy's nowhere to be found I've sit there and told mothers a thousand times I've told them my story because you can't believe this or not, but when I was a little boy, six and seven and eight and nine years old, I remember as clear as I'm standing before you today, times when God would come and speak to me, times when God would come and direct me, times when God would come and lead me. Hallelujah. Because even though I didn't have a daddy, I had a daddy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And because I had a praying mama, God honored her prayers and God came and God, God watched over me and God kept me and God blessed me. Hallelujah. And so I can tell mamas that's got little bitty babies, I, 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 I don't wish that upon anybody, but I can tell them it'll be all right. You may not have a daddy, but you got a daddy. Amen. You may not have a husband, but you got a husband. His name is Jesus. And he's there all the time. Hallelujah. Praise God. I went to Ukraine one time and I told that story. I was outside in a field at a country church. 5,000 people were in that field. They had been there all day long. Six hours they had stood in a cold rain. Six hours in a field, open field. Their clothes were soaked. My clothes were soaked. I got to preach at the end of that six hours and I simply told a little story about my life. And when I gave the altar call, there were dozens of people. They were in the mud weeping and crying because could I tell you, you can take whatever life has dealt you. You can take whatever hell has sent you away. And if you'll use it for the glory of the gospel, God will do great and mighty things. What I'm saying is don't be ashamed of where you came from. Pastor Hugo and his wife Joyce, they, they, they at one point in their life, in their marriage, uh, they had tragedy came and struck and they were over a million dollars, a million dollars in debt. But Pastor Hugo's story, it could have been that was the end, but no, God brought him out of it. God paid all the bills, amen, and God delivered it. And God has now, now put Pastor Hugo in a place where he counsels people just about every day who come in who are struggling financially. Why? Because he took what the devil meant for his destruction and he's beating him over the head with it. Hallelujah. Every day. 
Our former youth pastor, Gina York, uh, she came out of a hellish home. She came out of a terrible family life. But God changed it all around and used that to, to begin to reach and minister to young people and, and to youth because God will take your pain and He'll make praise out of it if you let Him. I believe there's, there's people, listen... I believe there's going to be so many people that are so inspired by my preaching. Are you listening to me? They're going to be so, some people that are, so many people are going to be so inspired by my preaching that they're going to become preachers. And you say, Pastor, that's an awful prideful thing to say. Well, no, here, here's, the, here's the point, because all these young preachers, they're watching T.D. Jakes, and they're watching Jensen Franklin, and they're watching Joyce Myers on television, and they're saying, oh, my God, I could never do that. But then they come to one of my services, and they hear me preach, and they say, if he can do it, hallelujah, I can do it. If he can do it, anybody can, hallelujah. Because what you're looking at is not what you really see. Because Raymond Hardy is not a wild preaching machine. Raymond Hardy is mild-mannered Clark Kent. And so I've just decided to take my timidity. I've just decided to take my quietness. What the devil said, nobody could ever use that. But God can use it. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to use everything for the gospel. Y'all don't like my preaching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will take your averageness and do great things. And you can do the same thing. Everybody here can do the same thing. How many drug addicts and drunkards do we have sitting here? If you're here, just blow your horn. Amen. You used to be. Amen. That used to be your lifestyle. You used to drink and lust and and all of those things. But now, hallelujah, now God has saved you and filled you with the Holy Ghost. Don't you dare sit on your testimony and say, shh, I don't want nobody to know where I came from. No, tell everybody where you came from. Tell everybody the depths of the hell you used to live in. Tell everybody what Jesus can do if you surrender your life to him. Hallelujah. There's millions of people. There's people listening to me right now. I'm convinced You're in the depths of your own darkness. But God, if you'll hear this crazy preacher tonight... I'm here to tell you that wherever you find yourself, God is able to bring you out of it. Praise God. (sighs) How many of you have been in jail or prison? (laughs) Go ahead. Give me me a... (laughs) Ain't nobody. Ain't got no jailbirds in the house tonight. Hallelujah. We got some. Got some liars too. Amen. (laughs) Hallelujah. Can I tell you, I got a man that's been in prison and he keeps going. In our church, he's been in prison and he keeps going back time after time after time. But he ain't going back to serve time. He's going back to serve those who are in the prison now because God has delivered him. God has set him free and he's taken. He's taken everything and using it for the glory of God. There may be somebody here, you've had an abortion and you've had a child out of wedlock. Use it so that others won't make the same mistake. You ain't got to be ashamed of it. God has blessed that child. Amen. God has raised that child. Maybe the circumstances wasn't what you wanted or hoped to be, but God has blessed you. Amen. And God has blessed that child. Take it. Amen. And show that God is a merciful God and God is a gracious God and God is a good God. One of the greatest testimonies I've ever heard. I heard it with my own ears, saw it with my own eyes. One of the greatest testimonies I ever heard came from a man by the name of Ted Bundy. You may recognize that name because Ted Bundy is one of the most notorious mass murderers that America has ever seen. He was a rapist and a mass murderer. I think he murdered six young women at one time down at Florida State University. But before he died, on the way to the execution chamber, James Dobson interviewed him, and he shared one of the most glorious testimonies I've ever heard, that God can save a murderer. God can save a rapist. God can set, if he can set him free. Uh, Hallelujah. It's become a weapon. When I talk to old preachers, I used to talk to... Some old preachers used to talk to old Pastor Clarence Greer. Come over here and sit with him sometimes. Been over to his house when he was in the home. I went over and sat with him. And when I sat with Pastor Greer, I didn't want to hear 
Didn't want to hear about all of his excesses. I wanted to hear about all of his failures. I wanted to hear about all of his struggles. I wanted to hear about all of those times when it didn't look good, but he persevered, amen, and he can still talk about him and tell about him and use all of that pain and all of those things that happened in his life. He can use them for the glory of God. I used to know an old Pentecostal preacher, preached in the 30s and 40s, and he was in a tent meeting like we're having tonight. And after tent meeting, a bunch of men caught him, tied his breeches legs together, filled his pants full of rats, and they said, dance now, preacher. Dance now, preacher. I guess he did some dancing. I would if I had pants full of rats. But can I tell you, he didn't stop dancing. He came back the next night, and he danced again before the Lord, and he danced the next night, and it wasn't long. So the very ones that put the rats in his pants were on their knees and on their face, giving their lives to Jesus. Hallelujah. Use everything. Use everything. Hallelujah. Y'all don't like my preaching, but amen. Moses. Moses, the great man of God, came to the burning bush. and God asked him, said, Moses, what you got in your hand? He said, ain't got nothing but this old shepherd's staff. Ain't got anything but this old rod. That rod was 40 years of... Wilderness journey, that, that, that rod represented every failure that Moses was. He was a murderer and he was a fugitive and he was a failed deliverer of God's people. But God said, Moses, I want you to take that same rod that has marked all of your 40 years of failure and now I want you to go with that same rod and that rod of failure now will become the rod of God. It will become the rod of deliverance in your hand. And with that rod, he smote waters and they opened. With that rod, he worked mighty miracles because if you'll just take... If you'll just take all of those things. Do you know the, the circumstances of your life are, are completely unique? Nobody's been through all the things that you've been through in the exact way that you've been through them. No one has fought and suffered and, 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 and been attacked by the devil exactly the way you have. And so many Christians, so many, they, they roll up the forward and they say I, I'll never be anything and God can't use me no you got to get a new mindset you got to take all of that junk you got to take all of that stuff that caused you so much pain and you got to say devil listen You've hit me with it, and you've tried to kill me and destroy me, but you'll not have this, amen, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take what you've tried to destroy me with, and I'm going to use it to preach the gospel, and I'm going to use it to glorify God, and I'm going to use it for His kingdom's sake. Use everything for the gospel, everything for the gospel. Hallelujah. If you've been successful, use it for the gospel. If you have wealth, use it for the gospel. But if you're as poor as dirt, use it for the gospel. You say, how can I use poorness for the gospel? You can, you can, you can keep trusting God till God brings you out of your poorness. Amen. And God begins to give you an abundance. And then one day you'll be able to take all the rags that you didn't that you had and begin to tell people about all the riches that you do have because God brought you out. Amen. And God brought you through. And God use that for your glory, His glory and your good. If you're sick, use it for the glory of God. Oh, we in Christianity, we believe if you got sickness, then, you're, uh, then you just need to believe more. Just, just trust the Lord. And, and if you're sick and, and God's not healed you, you don't have enough faith. That's hogwash. You can be sick as the day is long. You keep on believing God. You keep in trusting the Lord. You keep on, you keep on believing every day. You keep speaking the word over your sickness. I mean, you keep, you keep claiming your healing every day of your life. But until it comes, go into the cancer center and tell that little lady sitting beside of you how that when you started treatment, your hair didn't fall out. When you started treatment, you didn't get sick. Go tell somebody, the doctor said you had two months to live, but that was two years ago. And God has still got you because you got to use everything for the glory of God. Hallelujah, use everything. If you're blind, Fanny Crosby was blind and never got her sight. But she, she used her blindness to write some of the greatest hymns the world has ever known. 
David Ring, have you ever heard David Ring preach? David Ring has several palsy. You can hardly hear, you can hardly understand him at times when he preaches, but he gets up there with his jerky and he preaches a sermon that says, quit your belly aching. Amen. And he has won more people to Christ than most preachers ever have because he's got a word. Amen. It didn't stop him. He's got six kids. Amen. He's blessed coming in and going out because even though he's got an infirmity, he's using everything for the glory of God. Hallelujah. If you got joy, use your joy to attract people. Pastor Hugo, Pastor Beckles, what I love about both of them is they're full of joy. You never see them without some joy. Amen. You never see them without a smile. They use their joy to pull people into their area of love. Hallelujah. If you got sorrow and heartache, use it for the glory of God. Cindy and I have been ministering to people just recently. We've had a a dearth of people that have lost loved ones and and we know what they're going through and we know how they feel but we've decided we're not going to let our pain keep us from helping somebody else, amen, come out of their pain. And so, so use everything for the glory of God. If you lived a sinful life, use it for the glory of God. We had a man in our church by the name of Perry Burgess, a notorious drug addict and drug dealer in this community. But Perry Burgess got saved in a prison cell and he came out of prison and he spent the rest of his life going to the homeless, going into the prisons, going into the down and outers, telling them he used all of his past to tell others about the goodness of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you've lived a righteous life. You know when I got saved, I used to wonder about myself. I said, God... I ain't got no... People get up, well, bless God, I was an addict and I was did this. I murdered folks. I did all this. And I'm telling you, you're looking at the original goody two-shoes. You're looking at it. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I didn't chew. I didn't run around with the girls that do. Amen. I was, I was, I just, I'm just good. I was a good boy. Ask my mama. She'll tell you. Amen. First girl I really kissed was the one I'm married to right now. Amen. The only one my lips had touched. Praise God. But I can can use that testimony to tell people that God, not only can God deliver you from a sinful life, but God can keep you righteous. Amen. If you'll obey Him and listen to Him, that God can help you not to sin. You see, what has happened to you, what has happened... To me, what has happened in our life is not an uh uh-oh by God. You 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 can sin and you can sulk and you can cry and weep over all of your life experiences and tell people how bad and all the... Listen... You need to get out of there. You need to get over there. You need, to for, you, you need to forget the past in the sense that it's holding you down, but never forget the past in the sense that you can use everything for the glory of God. You can share the Word of God with those who are broken and hurting. So what God has given you, so what God has given you and what Satan has given you, whatever comes into your life, take all, take everything. And use it for the glory of God and for the preaching of the gospel. You ever ever watched a video? You ever watched a video of of someone getting beat with a stick? I love these videos. These are my favorite videos. Somebody getting attacked and getting beat with a stick, and the person turn around and take a stick out of hand and start beating the, the fire out of them. I love that. Amen. Amen. And that's what I'm, I'm just simply telling you tonight. That's my message. Quit bowing down and cowering down every time Satan comes in and hits you with something. You look him square in the eye and say, Devil, you're a liar and this will not defeat me. And if you hit me one more time, I'm going to hit you twice. And if you strike me on the head, I'm going to strike you on the head and the feet. I'm going to do with what you give me. And I'm going to use it for the glory of the gospel. In just a few days on Monday of this coming week, Satan hit me and my wife with the greatest stroke he has ever put upon us. It cowered me. It it bowed me over. It took my breath. 
The day my son died, my world seemed at the moment to end, and Satan rose up in that moment. And he told me to quit, and he told me to give up, and he told me to quit the ministry. And I'm telling you, I was within inches of of turning in my resignation. I was in inches of burying my head under a pillow and never coming out again. But can I tell you, something rose up in me. Something rose up in me, and I told the devil, something rose up in me, and I looked him square in the eye, and I said, Devil, you've made the worst mistake of your life in the life of Raymond and Cindy Hardy. Because I'm here to tell you that I will not give up, but instead I'm going to go further than I've ever went. I'm going to preach longer than I ever preached. I'm going to do more for the kingdom of God than I've ever done. I'm not going to retire. I'm going to retread. I'm going to get my second wind, and I'm going to raid hell, and I'm going to pull souls out of the darkest pits of darkness. Use everything. Everything. Say with me everything for the glory of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because if you will, hallelujah, if you will, you will change the world that you live in. And not only change the world you live in, you'll change our world. If we will, if we will fight, listen, it's time to fight. It's not a time to ri- sit down and shut up. It's a time to rise up. And to take the weapons of our warfare, which are not carnal but mighty through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. And we need to attack the enemy head on and defeat him. And there are people listening to me, listening to me tonight, listening to me tonight, that you've been hit. You're right there, right now. Your knees want to buckle and, and, and you're living in a place right now when it looks like you're helpless and you're hopeless, but you're anything but that. And God just says to take whatever it is right now that you don't think you can handle and take it out of the devil's hands and look up to heaven from which your redemption cometh and call upon the name of the Lord. And if you'll do that, God will give you the strength for whatever you need. And it'll not only be for your salvation, but it'll be for others who are, who are in need Of the very thing, they're under the very same attack. But God will use your testimony for His glory. 